In today's video, we're going to be nerding out about van insulation and finally setting the record straight about two of the most popular products for insulating a camper van, Thinsulit versus Wool. We had some third party testing done and the results are pretty interesting. And we think you're gonna to wanna to see this. So let's not waste any more time, hit it. There's going to be a lot of information in this video, so quickly before we dive in, if you enjoy and get some value from these videos and wanna see more, take a quick second to like this video and subscribe to the channel so you can get notified when the new videos go live. Okay, there's been a lot of debate on what is the best product for insulating a camper van, and we wanted to see scientifically how they test it out in a variety of metrics. We had a third-party testing lab test these two products to see how they perform in a variety of ways, here are the things that we tested for. Weight and thickness, sound absorption, thermal resistivity, better known as our value, moisture absorption, hydrophobicity, yes, it's a real word, I looked it up, odor, dusting, also known as fiber shedding, and flammability. So let's get right into it. Weight. The first test was weight and thickness, and that consisted of weighing and measuring a square meter of material. The 3M Fencelet SM600L came in at 42 millimeters thick and 642 grams per square meter. For us on the Imperial system, that's 1.65 inches thick and 1.4 pounds per square meter. The wool came in at 43 millimeters thick and 1,166 grams per square meter. That's 1.69 inches thick and 2.6 pounds per square meter. This is the first interesting thing that we found because the brand of wool we tested advertises a bat thickness of two inches. But when measured by us and the testing site, it measured at 1.69 inches, which will significantly come into play when discussing R value and sound deadening. Another thing that's interesting is the wool is heavier, about 27 pounds more on an average van. Not terrible, but every pound counts in a van build. And as we'll see, heavier material doesn't necessarily mean better. Sound absorption. In the second test, the lab tested sound absorption using both the alpha cabin and impedance tube methods and found similar results. These are two of the most common and widely accepted tests for sound absorption and degradation. The Thinsulet outperformed wool significantly, both with higher sound absorption coefficient and over a wide range of frequencies. This basically means that Thinsulet is noticeably better at absorbing sound than wool, making your van quieter overall. Thermal resistivity, aka R value. The next test is probably the one that most people are interested in, and that is R value, or in scientific terms, thermal resistivity. I just feel like Albert Einstein every time I say that. But thermal resistivity represents the resistance of a material to the flow of heat per unit area for a given temperature difference. We're really nerding out here, aren't we? Now, to be honest, this is the area where I thought that the wool might have the edge since R value is partially correlated to overall material thickness and the wool is advertised to be two inches thick. But when we measured the thickness and when the lab measured the thickness, it only measured 1.69 inches thick. So, Thinsulate came out slightly on top here as well. As you can see, the R value of the Thinsulate was 5.62, while the R value on the wool measured was 5.35. While this difference isn't gonna be as significant as the sound absorption result, Thinsulate was superior in this test. This isn't surprising when you consider Thinsulate is used in sleeping bags, winter jackets, and throughout the automotive industry for its superior sound and thermal resisting properties. Moisture absorption. Thinsulate absorbed only 0.4% or less than half of 1% of its weight in water, while the wool absorbed 13% of its weight. So basically, if you had a small piece of wool, just a tad smaller than a square meter that weighed 1,000 grams, it would absorb an additional 130 grams or about a quarter pound of water. If the average van needs 24 square meters of insulation, that would be approximately six pounds of water. That's a lot of water considering the amount of condensation that happens in a van overnight. In terms of hydrophobicity, Thinsulate is the clear winner here as it's extremely moisture resistant. Odor. 
Now let's talk about odor because anyone who has ever stepped foot inside a van that's been insulated with wool will know what I'm talking about here. It smells like a petting zoo and, and the smell doesn't easily go away. The scale used for this test was one, having no noticeable odor, two, having a slight but noticeable odor, three, being very noticeable odor, four, meaning the smell was strong and offensive, and five, having a very strong offensive odor. When dry, the Thinsulet tested at 1.3 and the wool tested at 3.25. When wet, the Thinsulet measured at 1.6, still below noticeable odor level. When wet, the wool earned a four, meaning that the smell was strong and offensive. So effectively, the Thinsulet had no odor when dry or wet, and the wool had a noticeable odor when dry and an offensive odor when wet. Flammability. Okay, now let's talk about flammability because I know that this might be a topic of concern for a lot of people and the test results came back neutral from the third party testing. This means that there wasn't much of a difference between the two products in terms of flammability and both products are not flammable. That being said, we're van nerds here at Van Life Outfitters and we're not going to miss out on the chance to light things on fire. So we did some of our own tests. And as you can see here in the video, both products didn't exactly kindle any flames, but the wool did flame a little bit. It did carbonize and it did create a lot of smoke that quite honestly reeked of burning hair because well, that's what it is. On the other hand, the Thinsulate didn't carbonize or smoke at all. In fact, it's sort of well liquefied on combustion and basically extinguished itself. Now this shouldn't come up for 99.9% .9 of van lifers, but it's good to know. Dusting, aka fiber shedding. Shedding or dusting is the amount of material that's lost over time due to vibration, heat, or movement. Fiber loss uh, affects thermal resistance and acoustic performance, and those shedded fibers could end up in areas that you don't want them. Thinsulate is a non-woven synthetic material and doesn't shed at all, but on the other hand, wool had large chunks missing in the small amount of testing that the lab did the wool lost almost 6% of its material to shedding. In a van that's constantly moving and getting hot, this would theoretically get worse over time. Think about how much fiber shedding would occur after driving thousands of miles over several years. I've also anecdotally spoke to several builders who have had to do renovations on vans insulated with wool, and they've told me that most of the fibers were sitting on the bottom when they opened up the van's walls. Affiliates. The last thing I want to talk about here briefly is who is using what. I've been doing van life for seven years and we have hundreds of professional builders who buy from us. And I would say that the vast majority of van builders, especially the best builders in the country, use Thinsulate. And as you can see from the testing, it's a superior product in every single category. The segment of people that I see using wool the most are influencers. And my opinion is that the reason influencers use wool is because they are paid an affiliate commission by wool companies to promote their products. Now, I'm not saying this is the case with all influencers and their sheeple and all the wool companies, but I bring this up to make you a little more aware as to what possible motives that some people might have when recommending a product. At Van Life Outfitters, we could have chosen to sell wool and or Thinsulate, but we chose Thinsulate only because it's the best product on the market and Van Life Outfitters only sells the best products in each category. Well, that does it for this video. Hopefully we cleared up some of the confusion surrounding the two most popular choices on the market for insulation. Please head over to vanlifeoutfitters.com for tons of other blog posts, videos, product reviews, and other useful content about building a DIY camper van. And while you're there, consider supporting our store, which features only the best road-tested products for your van build. As always, thanks for watching, safe travels, we'll see you next time.